Got a low-budget movie that needs a brilliant actor to play a complete psychopath? Call Brad Dourif. Got a big-budget movie that needs a brilliant actor to play a complete psychopath? Call Brad Dourif. Either way, you're gonna get a top-shelf performance. On the lower-budget side of things is this week's movie, Death Machine. Death Machine's a 1994 sci-fi horror film from director Stephen Norrington. The movie opens in the near future. Just for clarity, this is the far future. This is the near future. Meanwhile, in Chicago, a bunch of guys wearing the Army of Two gear head to a diner where everyone's dead. They go into the bathroom where a rogue cyborg is punching a sick techno beat into the wall. The ARP are there to retrieve the cyborg, who went nuts and killed everyone in the diner. There he is. The ultimate soldier. More like the AARP. The news is reporting on the cyborg, which they believe was part of the Chank Corporation's military division. Hayden Kale is one of the top executives at Chank, and everyone's pissed off at her over the recent developments with the corporation. Miss Kale, Miss Kale, I'm a big fan. Can I have an autograph? The news is asking Kale for a statement on Chank's secret projects when Chief Executive Ridley butts in to answer. Just listen to this sincerity in his voice. Who wouldn't believe him? Of course she's aware. Chank is a responsible corporation with a clear world vision. Ridley calls a board meeting because somebody inside a Chank has been leaking information to the press. Kale announces that she's the leak there to expose Ridley's shenanigans. Carpenter won't shut up and accidentally informs Kale about the Hard Man Project. What are you talking about? It's fundamentally flawed. John. Direct cerebral downloading generates collateral errors. John. I've explained this to Dante over and over. John. But you know how excitable he can first. John. What? What? Shut the fuck up. Kale insists they fire Jack Dante, the lead designer of the Hardman Project. The rest of the staff doesn't want to because they're afraid of him. Each of the executives have a LoJack installed in them so they can be tracked in... Rachel Vice. Kale's investigating the mysterious death of one of the other executives. He was eaten by a shark. Well, you know how we handle sharks around these parts. Yeah! Kale goes to see Dante in his lab. Keep out? What is this, the No Homers Club? He even has his name spray painted on there. I'm surprised it doesn't have Is Cool on there as well. Kale heads into what looks like the back half of a radio shack. The room's filled with electronics, action figures, and I can't show you, but the walls are literally covered in porn. I didn't know Mumra was so perverted. I want to see your tits, my dear. Kale's searching Dante's room. Oh, so that's where I left the E. Kale finds Dante. Get out of my room, Mom. Jeez. This is my room. We'll keep it clean. That could be the most 90s outfit I've ever seen. Oh, I take it back. This is the most 90s outfit. Outside of Chank headquarters, a group of guys are getting ready to infiltrate the building. Ted, we've talked about this. Why do you insist on painting your face? It looks stupid. Raimi offers Yutani a joint, but he has a joint made out of other joints. Get on my level! Kale's confronting Ridley about Dante. Nicholson did what you're doing. You read the autopsy. Shark attack. In this fucking building? Wait, they accepted that he was killed by a shark inside of an office building? Kale stole Ridley's card so she could sneak in to see what Dante's building. Robo Shark? Kale's listening to some information about Dante. Siri sounds drunk. Released into the care of Corporation. Dante confronts Kale with his used porn. The lead singer of Nickelback and the Stoner Gang are sneaking into Chank. Dante goes to talk to Ridley. Why is he channeling Daffy Duck? Hi, Scott. Dante unleashes his latest creation, the Death Machine, to kill Ridley. Hopefully, you die. What? Okay, guys, I want you to spit as much as possible here. Scott, be reasonable. You're planning to slay my sweetie. Plus, you did give her your access swiping card. She stole it! This looks like a quick time event. Carpenter calls Kale to come back to Chank to see the remains of Ridley. What are we gonna do? Uh, leave the building? She uses Carpenter's keycard to lock the death machine into Vault 10 and block Dante's access. Ramey and crew show up just in time to stop Dante. They then take the remaining executives hostage. They need to drill into the main vault to get to the Chank servers. Dante convinces them he knows an easier way in, through Vault 10. Once inside, Dante unleashes the death machine. Waylon blows himself up and knocks Ramey out of the room. Ramey suggests they all leave. Carpenter then goes into overacting mode. 
It's not our problem. We have nothing to do with it. Nothing. Red Gale, tell him. Hey, be quiet. What are you, a one-man percussion section or something? Eh, fuck it. Raimi tells Kale they're there to blow up the Chank servers to put the company out of business. After the bomb goes off, the blast doors get sealed, which makes it difficult for the death machine to get around. The group's taking a service elevator, but the death machine breaks in and rips Carpenter in half. The death machine cut Yatani's leg in the elevator, so he does this. We're gonna need a bandage or something here. They use the executive's key and get into the restricted lab. They discover the truth of the Hardman project. This is Chang's weapon of the future. You take an injured war vet, make sure he's listed MIA, and erase his mind. Pump up his violent nature and program him with knowledge of every weapon and fighting skill you can think of. He becomes the ultimate fighting unit. Isn't this the plot of Universal Soldier? They watch some videos that show the results of prolonged exposure to Iggy Azalea. Completed preliminary cerebral load. This is the first test of its effectiveness. I want to hit it. They investigate the documents on the death machine, which is presented like an 80s music video. So Dante named the death machine the War Beast. That sounds like two bands that would have been touring in 1994. Kale suggests they suit her up to fight the War Beast, but Raimi does it instead, since Kale needs to work the computer. They load the Hardman software into Raimi, but all he sees is the intro to Doctor Who. Kale sets his basic parameters. Maybe she should have installed a program where he doesn't yell all the time. Executing combat objective now! This area is secure! This armor looks extremely cumbersome. There's an elevator on the roof that'll take them to the surface. No one seems to understand how to be quiet in this movie. Quiet! Raimi Bot opens the lock, but the War Beast barges in. The two get into a fist fight while Kale and Yutani escape. War Beast is briefly incapacitated, so Raimi Bot's able to get outside. Yutani holds it off and almost would have escaped if he didn't do this. <laughs> The War Beast is out in the open, and we finally get a good look at it. Looks like an upgraded Mauser. Raimi and Kale escape on the freight elevator to hell. Going down. Kale removes the programming from Raimi, so he's back to normal. They get to the bottom, but of course, now the police show up. I'm not believing his performance. Holy donuts! They get into the bunker and wait for the bulkhead to open. Of course, Dante is waiting for them. He stops the War Beast before it kills Kale. Kale tricks Dante and takes the War Beast controller. Kale locks snotty Dante into the containment chamber with the War Beast and lets it kill him. The movie was filmed mostly in England for about $6.5 million. It was written and directed by Stephen Norrington, who would go on to direct Blade and The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Norrington has a background in special effects, specifically in creative design, which is probably why the War Beast looks so cool. Although I wish we got to see it more. I realize you don't want to show your hand too early. You want to build up to that reveal. But even in the reveal shots, we just get these brief glimpses of it, which is a shame because it looked awesome. The original cut of the film ran about two hours long. For the U.S. cut, they removed about 21 minutes of material, a lot of which greatly impacts the tone of the film. For example, the opening showed the police outside the diner and more of the destruction the rogue cyborg caused. In the U.S. cut, it jumps right to when the ARP guys are going in after it. There were little things like the inner cutting of the dead children death toll. They cut out Kale's nightmare about how guilty she felt now that she knows that Shank was responsible for kids being killed in other countries. This led into another scene where Kale was confessing how she accidentally killed her daughter. Her daughter died by getting her arm ripped off in a garbage disposal. They cut the ending short because of the removal of Kale's daughter. In the director's cut, Dante's screaming like a spoiled, snot-nosed child after losing his favorite toy. You better listen to me because I'm dangerous! You're in the right business, Jack. I'm not in this business anymore. 
Kale unleashes the war beast to stop him from ever hurting anyone again. It also works as a way for her to come to make peace with her past. Mama? I don't like the dark. For all the children. In the U.S. cut, it ends much more abruptly. I'm not in this business anymore. They cut almost all of Dante's behavior, which greatly affected how the audience saw him. In the cut version, he's just a crazy person. But in the director's cut, he's an absolute psychopath. They cut the scene where he tried to rape Kale, showing that the people needed to fear both him and the war beast. They also cut some gore and some odds and ends that really fleshed out the film and made it more than just a killer robot movie. It's hard to get the uncut version of the film. In the US, it was only released as a full frame cut of the R-rated version. It's an abysmal framing, too. Whoever did the transfer didn't even bother doing a pan and scan, so with many of the scenes, you can't tell what's going on because of the framing. Look at the difference between this... ...and this... The German DVD is fully uncut, but it's not in English. It's infuriating because another cool movie is gimped in its release. The movie had all sorts of references with its characters. Jean Cherian played Sam Raimi, named after the director of The Evil Dead. When Raimi fires off the missile, the camera follows it first-person style, like the shots of Sam Raimi's Evil Dead. William Hootkins played John Carpenter, named after the director of Halloween. Richard Brake played Scott Ridley, a play on Ridley Scott, who directed Alien. Andre Wisniewski played Wayland, and Malcolm McDougall played Yutani. Wayland Yutani is the megacorporation from Alien. Brad Dura played Jack Dante, which was an homage to the director, Joe Dante. Durf was awesome as usual. He played an almost childlike villain that veered wildly into insanity. Ellie Pogut was also great as Hayden Kale. I like that she was an actual three-dimensional character. She was vulnerable, but still kicked ass when needed. She held her own, and while she had the help of Raimi and Yutani, she saved them more than they saved her. This was Rachel Weisz's first movie. This is a kick-ass, very overlooked action sci-fi movie. It's much more cerebral than you think, and has some terrific performances. I just hope the director's cut gets an official release at some point in the near future. <laughs> Tell me the month.